Blood Time, the podcast that speaks to the bond, the emotion between coach and athlete at the interscholastic and intercollegiate level. Each interview, each segment will reveal that bond and what was learned, how they were transformed, and what each athlete took to the world at large from that transformation. These stories will warm your heart and astound you all together. Submitted for your approval, now it is blood time. I want to thank Serve Pro of Beechwood, our newest sponsor, and Jack Coslin, the owner. They serve all of Northeast Ohio, not just Beechwood. They specialize in disaster cleanup that leaves your home or office like new, like it never happened. Flood and water damage, fire, mold, and they say even blood and guts. Not just any Serve Pro. Seek out Serve Pro of Beechwood. That's Serve Pro Beechwood, Shaker Heights, Cleveland Heights dot com, 216 416- 464-4498. Operated by a former All-State wrestler from Beechwood, we love Serve Pro of Beechwood. Hey, it's Coach Cimarroni, Blood Time, and uh, I want to thank my last guest. Uh, he was just poignant, profound, Chad Silverstein, a guy that almost quit wrestling uh, as a freshman and is now one of the top business leaders in Columbus. Brought us some beautiful beautiful thoughts and uh, inspiration. Today, we've got a little bit different format. It's almost a a serious roundtable here. We've got a tremendous uh, father-son team in who started a company about 15 years ago, and they are just doing magnificently, built a new facility out of Vermilion. Gus and Guy Seiko, welcome, guys. Thank you. How you doing? All right, good. Thanks Thanks for being in studio. And to my left is uh, the new coach from a storied program, I think four or five years now as the head yep. coach, Audie Atienza from Solon. How you doing, Audie? I'm doing well, Pete. Thanks for having me. Oh, my God. Thanks for being in here. So we're going to have a little bit of a roundtable, guys. But first, I want to start uh, just to say about blood time. Blood time is really the bond between the coach and the athlete. And at that moment, they become transformed. And so I'm going to turn it over to you first, Guy. You've done a lot of transformation for other guys. I mean, you, you coach youth, um, you've coached for many years, but who was that guy or guys that got inside your head, got inside your heart and said, you know, I can do this and maybe do something better than what I'm doing. Just transformed you. Was there, was there, were there, were there guys I, that like that? Yeah, I had three guys and they're all um, National Hall of Fame coaches. My high school coach, John Sedlick. Yeah, oh, sure. Wellington, National Hall of Famer. Mm-hmm. Uh, of course, Gary Ceresi. Oh, my goodness, yes. And, and then uh, Dick Bonacci. Wow. That and, is a all-star crew. And right? Dick coaches with me still today. Does he really? Yeah. How's he doing? He's doing good. He's 86 years old and good. still shows technique. God bless him. So he does pretty good. God bless him. That was like uh, recently we had a little uh, mishap with, uh, not mishap, but uh, this uh, health issue with Dom I. Marino. And I had him in studio here, 79 years old. He's still showing uh, moves, and he had a minor stroke, but he's still sh- showing moves after the minor stroke. So it's a beautiful thing, right? Yeah. So how did they affect you? Well, my high school coach, was at the time, he wasn't like a super talented mm-hmm. uh, coach, but he was a super hard worker. Okay. So he, he like uh, really instilled um, work ethic. His sure. work ethic was incredible. And... Um, He's become a tremendous coach over the years, but he was young when I was with him, and he sure. was still growing. But the one, the one thing that he had was, um, if we don't know how to do it, we're just going to work hard and figure it out type attitude, and he was really good at that. Yeah, and so it, that figure it out mentality, I love that. And right? dedication. Yeah, yeah well, what we're going to do is till we get it right, Yeah. and we just ground things out and got it right. And like you said, he's become a tremendous coach over the years. Sure. Uh, but his, the thing he passed on to me was work. Mm-hmm. And then Benashi, he uh, rolled the dice on me. He, yep. he recruited me um, out of Wellington. I never even went to the state tournament. Okay. But I somehow got a college scholarship, and I ended up wow. you know, doing pretty okay for a coach. Sure. And then Gary Serace was the assistant there at the time and yeah. took me under his wing. Yeah, Gar- Gary's a terrific technician. 
Yeah. Uh, and also just he gets inside your head and he's got that Maple Heights mentality, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's you need that. You need that. You need he that has a pretty good story too. Gary. He does. He does. He has a terrific story. But uh, having said that, you've got uh, your son with you, Gus. Gus, so, so talk a little bit about, you know, your dad just uh, revealed his, his transformation. Who are some of the coaches that affected you? Oh, yeah. I mean, it's a long list. It'd be kind of hard to pick them all, but between... The old man himself. Sure. There's a few years where I got tortured by Brian Dolph, but oh my, <laughs> I learned quite a lot there. Uh-huh. In high school, I was blessed at St. Ed's with Chef Leonard and John Heffernan. Both Leonard. those guys yep. took a lot, really good care of me. Mm-hmm. And then college, I mean, just different parts. I had, a, I had a goofy kind of career. Things kind of didn't okay. go so great. So different parts of my career, and when I needed different things, mm-hmm. I had different coaches step up and take care of me. So yep. between Manny Rivera, Jordan Lean, and Steve Garland, wow. they, they they took care of me pretty well. You know, that's a good point you make because most of us don't make four years in college. You know, we just don't. I mean, I didn't. You know, but I, but I had a coach that said you could coach, and then I started to coach, and I was like, I had kids that said that made me believe I could coach. So that was a, that was my, you know, my narrative, my journey. Did you have anybody that said to you maybe there's some things that you can do in the world? outside of wrestling that do you take that wrestling mentality too absolutely i mean it was and it wasn't so much that wrestling as just the body gave out and so gotcha. i was going to coach i was going to stick around at university of virginia sure and then yeah when you can't really finish your own season competing yeah. wise you can't really be a volunteer assistant when your sole job is to get your head bashed into a wall so right that kind of fell through there yeah it is very difficult if you can't wrestle with the guys mm-hmm. yeah i get it i get it so you and your dad are working in defense soap. Congratulations, fifteen years, correct, uh, guy? Yeah, but we're still both coaching on top of it all. That's like, I do the West Shore Club. He does St. Ed. So that's fantastic. We're, you know, the the two go hand in hand. Yeah. So so tell me about that. It's a, like a symbiotic relationship between Absolutely. you know the 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 soap, if you will, and and coaching. Tell me a little bit about that. It keeps mentality. us relevant. You know, yeah. we're still coaching. We still coach because we're coaches. But it keeps us relevant in, in the um, business world. Sure. It's very easy to call up a coach on the phone and say, hey, how's your team doing? You know, you have this, the conversation that you have with any other coach, and then you mix business in with a little bit of pleasure. It works really good for us. Sure. And uh, you guys are growing, obviously. Yeah. So tell me a little bit about that, you know, that trajectory and in, in the new situation in Vermillion. It's pretty cool. Yeah, it's pretty cool. We average 35% growth every year. Wow. So I mean, those, are, those are good numbers. Those are great numbers. <laughs> um, yeah, we're doing good. Yeah. The, um, our our biggest push in the last few years has been we're really um, big on Amazon. Uh-huh. And Amazon tends to be more the general public. Okay. Um, and with that, with the success there, we're going brick and mortar. And right now we're trying to secure Target. Nice. So we, re, we redid, redesigned our whole brand. Everything's looking kind of sharp. Okay. And we'll... we'll we're pushing Target pretty hard right now. That's awesome. Well, in retail, you've got to freshen your brand. There's oh, yeah. no question about Absolutely. it. And you also have to have not be a one-trick pony, which you're now doing. Yeah, we have like 21 SKUs right now. We have Brilliant. Um, FDA-regulated, medicated bars, as okay. well as our holistic lines. That's brilliant because everything is going, you know, probiotics and uh, holistics and uh, non-perfumes uh, and, well, you our, know, all that stuff, right? Our medicated bar is still 100% natural except for the medicine that we add to it. Okay. So we okay. kept true to our, our Well, medicines. and I'll tell you what, um, you know, we, I think we, we're using you guys. I'm pretty sure we are. But at the end of the day, um, it's, it's a big issue. Uh, you know, this year we've been very blessed that we haven't had any really skin issues. But man, oh man, I mean, there was years where I think teams just couldn't even wrestle. They were just, you know, disqualified because they had whatever they had on their skin, whether it was herpes yep. or ringworm or, you know, whatever. So, Impetigo is a big one. Isn't it? Yeah. That's the bacterial infection. It's strep throat. Impetigo is strep throat. So you got a lot of sick kids in the room coughing. Mm-hmm. Um, you have to be on the lookout for impetigo. And that just could attack damaged skin, so like mat burns or cuts yeah. or nicks or anything. Yeah. If that gets the, the strep bacteria on there, they'll get impetigo. Yeah, that's terrible. That's terrible. Well, we really love that you guys are doing this. Um, but you're also doing it not only in the combat sports, but also you're, you're bringing it to the general public. So t- talk a little bit about what, what made you do that, obviously, to increase your brand. But what, what gave you the, uh, you know, the motivation to do that? Well, just uh, the amount of reviews and the, the feedback we get from Amazon tells us that, you know, we're, 
we're very dedicated and, and entrenched in our niche, but we're not really a niche product. Sure. I mean, we have thousands and thousands of five star reviews from people that are not wrestlers at all. Sure. We, I mean, we're doing a new, we're doing a media deck for um, Target and shows my littlest wrestler, Maximus, yeah. my little guy. I love it. And then we have a, a elderly lady in a wheelchair. Love it. And our product goes all through the whole line. So. Well, there you go. Yeah, that's a that's a good place to live. That's a good place to live in. Audie, you know, uh, speaking about he was uh, a guy was talking about youth, you know, um, and obviously he's, he's affected a lot of youth wrestlers as as uh, he, he matriculates through his coaching career. Mm-hmm. Tell me a little bit about some of the guys that affected you uh, from youth on. Well, uh, just like Gus, there's just a a long list of uh, of gentlemen that have actually been, I guess. Coaches and along the way mentors. Uh, as I got into coaching myself, but I, sure. I, I kind of made a list of a lot of people. But um, sure, you know, it's all, it always starts at home. Just like Gus says, uh, my start, started with my dad being a, yep. really just as a uh, a person who, you know, led our family. Actually, you know, he was first generation over from the Philippines. You know, leading us this way and yeah. you know just showing us opportunities that we had and the reason why he brought us over here. But mm-hmm. you know, he started us with getting us into sports and stuff. So he kind of just started it that way. But uh, I also have three older brothers. Okay. Started, start, so it always starts at home. But um, mm-hmm. it always starts with Jamie Milkovich. He oh, my. begins and ends <laughs> with him. Yeah. He is. Uh, he started the youth program okay. in Maple Heights. And I was lucky enough to be the first class wow. of All wrestlers right. when he became the head coach of Maple Heights. So it sure. was, started with Jamie. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I'll always bring him back to um, – it's amazing what he does there. Yeah, he, it, he it really is, does. and he has never wavered from excellence. No, it's no. just crazy. And it's uh, you know, there's thing, things that he's had to change. You know, always things that he will never change. Yeah, that consistent foundation. Yeah, and yeah. he's he knows how to relate to to kids. You know, in into his late fifties now, so he's sure he's doing he does a great job. But um, you know, started with Jamie, and yeah. then um, in college, uh, Mike Deanna, Bruce Baumgartner. It's just those guys, you know, you see what excellence is and, oh you know, you just try and replicate that. This is wrestling royalty we're talking about, guys, yeah. right? I mean, from you guys to, to, to yeah. this. Yeah. I had a short stint at Edinburgh when they were there. Okay. so um, That's the Fighting and, Scots, right? Yeah, that's yeah. right. Oh. And, you know, I, my path took a little different detour. And, you know, as an adult, I got into coaching. And, sure. again, um, you know, a lot of times we cross paths with a lot of similar people. Sure. And, uh, you know, a guy talked about Gary Ceresi. Gary Ceresi gave me. My first coaching job. He wow. was a head coach at uh, Tri C at the time. Sure. So yeah. I worked with him closely for a couple of years, and he's great at, at not just mentoring kids but adults too. Like yes. He does. He does so well with that, and you yes. know, taught me a lot about coaching. And um, again, and as time went on, you know, the, I'm pretty close with the Milkovich family. So, yep. Uh, Tom Milkovich, Mike Junior. Danny, yes. you know, a lot of those guys I, I work closely with and uh, learned a lot about coaching and how to coach kids. And, you the know, original the, wrestling royal, yeah. the royal family, right? Yeah, it's yeah. just, uh, you know, how to coach kids and what's important, what sure. might not be, mm-hmm. and things like that. And then as I've come in uh, to my own program, uh, well, leading a program, uh, of course, Tony DiGiovanni. Another, and another royal. He's probably taught me more about how to coach kids sure. than anybody. Sure. But, um, you know, his longtime assistant Mike Thompson has been there for yes. twenty seven years. Oh yeah. Um, you know now Dave Zaransky again yes. cr- crossing yeah. paths with with Guy, one of his teammates. Sure. So it's it's just a been a long uh, learning experience, and I'm still learning. You know, forty yep. years old, still learning how to do this. So, Absolutely. You know, it's 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 fun to do, and you know, I think we can all say we're wrestling junkies. And yes, we are. We love it, and you know that's why we do it. And you know, it's interesting too because I loved going into Tony's room. I just really, really loved it. And I loved it because he had this incredible mix of old school and, and progressive attitude. He would talk to the kids, really get inside their head, both as a ass kicker, mm-hmm. but also as a father figure. You know, And I really tried to emulate that in my situation. I could never be Tony DiGiovanni, but he was really somebody to really um, emulate. So you were fortunate to have that. Oh, yeah. You know, and you have pieces and parts of Tony with Dave and Mike. You oh, know absolutely. what I mean, right? Yeah. They have pieces and parts of right. Tony, right? And, and, you know, they are their own personalities in themselves. But, um, 
you know, Tony has had a lot of influence on a lot of people over the years. Sure. And, you know, one of the things that I learned from him is it, it's, it's okay to be tough on kids. Yes. Because, you know, in talking to parents, parents are there to come out alongside their, their wrestlers. Yes. Be their parent. Don't be their coach. Right. I'll be the coach. I'll be the bad guy. I'll be the, the one who makes them tough. Well, the buck stops there, right? Yeah, Just like absolutely. Truman said, you know, I've got to make the final decision, mm-hmm. and I take the responsibility for that. That's right. But you teach the kid that, too, right? Mm-hmm. So absolutely. I'm going to open it up. You know, we're, we're talking. Obviously, we've got three coaches here, okay? Um, and four coaches. I'm a coach. Yeah. So tell me some stories, guys. Some guy that you really affected, and he's doing mm-hmm. some cool stuff now in the marketplace, or. Oh boy! You want to? You got it. Well, <laughs> you got a few. <laughs> I got one. Of, not anybody specific, but at one time, this is one of my proudest moments of coaching. Okay. I sat down and I looked at the kids that came through my West Shore program and that were in college. Yeah. And I had seventeen kids wrestling D one at one time on scholarship. Holy cow! And I was like, man, that's a pretty good chunk of kids. I think right now I have maybe eight. Wow. But those were like seventeen wow. kids that go. Basically, two full college teams, mm-hmm. you know, that came mm-hmm. through my program. That was, that was really cool. Guys. That is that is stunning numbers. I mean, it's not. There's no way to say it other than that. It's that is fantastic. So, so w- with that, and you said that, is there is there any one or two that just kind of stood out in your mind that they were really on the wrong path, you know, and you were able to, you know, kind of, you uh, know, I, put them back on the path. I kind of remember the kids that were. I remember this one kid's name was Andrew. Never won a match. I re- remember when he won his first match. We had a big, sure. big celebration. We were all excited, and, and then the kid never came back. This <laughs> 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 guy like, <laughs> spent a couple of years with the kid. And he finally did it. Like uh, we finally got a wrestler. We got yeah. This, that was his national title, though, guy, right? You know, it all depends on your perspective, yeah, right? So maybe he's figured I can't do any better. Than and every year, someone replaces. Yeah. Like just last week. Uh, when Saint has won the the duels, yes, Zach Taylor, the heavyweight, was sure. one of our guys, and yeah. he's a backup guy his entire career. I don't know if he ever started a match for us. Wow! And Kilbane got hurt, so Zach got in. Yeah, and so like he's the hero for the moment, and then he'll be he'll be gone. He'll be replaced by somebody else shortly here. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. I think it's, next man up, right? Next man up. Next yeah, man exactly. Up, yeah. yeah. Gus, well, how about you? You know, obviously you're coaching at Saint Ed. You've got to have a few stories, right? Uh, well, I'm. My career so far has been short-lived, so I mean, okay. I have some kids that have done some really extraordinary athletic accomplishments, but sure. we still sure. have some, some time on the clock to see how they turn out as humans. Well, that's true. You know, I, I interviewed my assistant coach, Jake, who's 26. I don't know how old you are. Uh, I'm sure you're probably 28. 28. Yeah, 28. So, yeah, so, right, uh, you know, obviously, guys, your dad's a little bit older than you, so he, there's some, some stories, but... Is there anybody that you coach that said, "Man, these, this kid's going to do something"? Well, I've I've had a lot. I mean, okay. there's right now. Obviously, we got a, a workhorse and Patty Gallagher. I, mean, I coached his be, dad, Tommy. Yeah, yeah, he was a stud. Yeah. We fully expect him to do some really special things. But then we we do have some other kids like like this Rich Del Sander kid. Okay, he really it's almost he's too disciplined. Kind of freaks me out a little bit at oh, times. Wow. wow, I have to like tell him to go be a kid and relax a little bit. Right, but right that with stuff like that. I, I see him going really far. He's slightly under the radar still, but mm-hmm. yep. just the way he lives his life, the way he does everything properly and without, mm-hmm. I mean, I don't even have to look at him. I know exactly what he's doing to the point where, mm-hmm. like I said, I have to tell him to go relax, go, wow. go watch a movie or play a video game for a minute, wow. be a kid. But when when he's in college and those real distractions start popping up, he's not going to have those. So I'm expecting some special things out of him. Mm-hmm. And then right now I got a couple What's guys What's his name, Del Sander? Yeah, Rich Del Sander. Yeah. Right now... We're trying to get the the All American streak back up. Sure. Alan Hart's really just looking like a killer right now. Okay. He's, he's doing very well at 133 out in Missouri. Okay. Uh, Dover's out there battling. Sam Dover. He's uh got a couple injuries, but yeah. Knock on wood, and he can get through that Big 12 and put together a tournament. Mm-hmm. Uh, little Angelo Rainey at Columbia. Him yes. and his teammate yes. Matt Casimir, Phil both my Rainey, guys. They wrestled together. Phil and Tom Gallagher wrestled mm-hmm. on the John Carroll team that I was lucky enough to coach. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Pretty both cool. those guys have been having some. Some really good wins. Matt's ranked in the top 15 right now, I think. Wow. And, and just, he had a rough start at 25, but they bumped up to 33, and he's been winning. So, well, tell knock on wood, they yeah, I mean, together. It, that's what it's all about, right? It's mm-hmm. a grind, as we know, you know. And But tell Del Santer that when I interviewed Kemp, the things that he talked about in high school was the coach had to send him home. 
So his name was Deppenbrock, another Hall of Fame coach. You know, Lee would say, come on, let's wrestle. So he'd wrestle till 8 o'clock at night. Finally, Deppenbrock would say, hey, I got to go see my wife. <laughs> Otherwise, I'm going to get divorced. You know, he says, go home, Lee. So Lee Kemp's not a bad guy to emulate, right? Mm-hmm. So that's that's good That's good news. So, Audie, how about you, man? Any, uh, any well, interesting stories? Yeah, b- before I do that, I, I sure. want to say something about uh, – about guy because mm-hmm. you know you think about it, I, I was processing that like 17 kids wrestling in, in, in d1 pro, program across the country and you know you think okay well they're all saying it's kids they come out of a story program it's easy right however if it doesn't start it in the youth program yes with the right people yes you don't get you don't get one no let alone 17 so it, it's a tribute to to what guy's doing there and his staff of developing kids the right way and not, not just, you know, nobody just gets there and has a bunch of studs. Right. They develop kids the right way. And, you know, again, it's a testament to how he coaches and how he's been coached. And, and again, you know, passing that down to the next generation of, of young wrestlers is, is a big thing. And, and, you know, I just want to say that it's not easy to do when you have eight, nine, ten-year-old kids. It, you, you can't predict how they're going to do. Sure. But, um, you know, again... Well, you know, what you were saying, uh, and Gus, you made a great point about distractions in college and to get, right? Well, I'll tell you, I, guys, <coughs> yeah. booze, bras, grades, and injuries. Exactly right, <laughs> right? Yeah, <laughs> in whatever it. order, right? You know what I mean? I mean, look at what happened to that uh, stud from Oklahoma State, right? Uh, he was a two-time, state, uh, two-time national champion his uh, senior year. Uh, what, what, he was a St. Ed's kid, wasn't he? Oh, Dean Hyde. Dean Hyde. Oh, oh, Dean. Right? I, I don't know exactly what happened, but, you know, whatever, right? There's distractions there that mm-hmm. occurred, and obviously, you know, whether he was injured or distractions or whatever, or a combination of both, it can affect you at that level. The point that you were making about distractions, and to your point about what Gus is doing, is that you have to have that foundation. You can do well in high school, okay, because you have that, almost that uh, nurturing father-son type of a situation, but when you go into D1, it's a business, and so you better have those foundations that you're talking about. Otherwise, you can't succeed. All right. And that's the beauty of what, you know, Gus has done and what you guys are doing as coaches is that you're giving those foundational pieces so they can succeed. Whether they wrestle or they just get their degree, just get their degree, they have to succeed. Right. So I think that's a great point, Audie. Yeah. I, I mean, and as far as, uh, you know, stories of, of former wrestlers, yes. you know, there's, there's a lot of them. You know, just, you know, no one... Uh, situation a wrestler comes to mind but there uh-huh. you just know of stories of, of kids that maybe weren't the best wrestler on their team or right. um, even even done have done great things but what wrestling has taught them is resilience mm-hmm. uh, hard work and what you know what comes from it so you know you, you get you, I know I've known of kids even kids on my own high school wrestling team that were you know kind of goofballs sure. and but they learn how to work hard. Yeah. And they learn that if you work hard and you do the right things, good things happen. Yep. So, you know, again, they, they become business owners and things of that nature and, and, and doing really well, you know, 20, 30 years later. So. Well, one of your assistant coaches done fabulously well. Yeah. Dave Zaransky, one of the meanest guys, guy yeah. said, one of the meanest guys because you wrestle with him right in college, oh, two-time yeah. All-American, but just, I mean, has done fabulously well. Yeah, and, and that's... Basically, all through hard work. Sure. And, I mean, you know, he, he's innovative in different ways. And, right. And, you know, he's had a, a lot of uh, people that have been on his side, and, and, mm-hmm. and he's made some good, a lot of good decisions. But it's basically, it's hard work. Sure. And yeah. it's what it comes down to. And, you know, successful one way or another. Right. You keep keep at it, so. And he has, God, he has God. a good wife, too. Yeah, well, that's why I, I wanted, I didn't want to, like, <laughs> say all that, but, yeah, yeah. you know, the talk about the brains behind the operations um, you know, sure. th- sure. there's his ass work ethic and her brains they're yeah. a dynamic I mean, it is yeah, yeah. It, it's it's outstanding it's like it's something you read about and then and, and but sure. you know it's, it's it's really cool when it's uh people you know and you, you learn their, their story and you get to know them and guy has actually seen it happens from college to, to today and and you know, he'll tell you that it's again it's brains and Hard work will get you a long way. Well, you know, in business, obviously, you've got to have great people 
around you, right, guy? Yeah. So I would imagine that you kind of hire him similar to you would hire an assistant coach. I don't know, maybe. Well, I have um, Gus Russell for Virginia. I have another sure. guy to wrestle for Cornell. Okay. I mean, so my yeah, I, I surround myself with pretty smart guys too. Right. You have to. And you let them do their job. Yeah. You know, um, I think that some of the greatest assistant coaches that I've ever had, I've had some great assistant coaches, as a matter of fact, Mavericks, our wonderful producer's father is, it's like a like an absolute brother to me, if, if even closer. But we would finish each other's sentences. He would know what I was thinking, and that's I think really what is the beauty of our of our experience as a coach to take into the business world. I don't know if you've experienced that or not. Well, it's kind of our our we're kind of unique. Like when Charlie Agazino, who oh yeah, true. Vince Matucci's grandson, sure, he went. He's my Cornell guy, and he came okay. to work. He was like. I don't really know what I'm supposed to do here. Right. I'm like, just get to work. You'll yeah. figure it out. You'll figure it out. And everybody kind of like falls into something that they're good at. Okay. And then they do that. We are, we're a very like loose, loosely organized company. And when you say like, sure. if you're good at this, that's your job. If you're good at this, that's your job. Right. And everybody falls in place and runs <clears throat> smoothly. But it seems to be running pretty smoothly. Yeah. So that's. Well, fantastic. I mean, sometimes Gus is. A son being a pain in the ass to the father? Never happened, right, Gus? No, it's yeah. the other way around. Absolutely. It's like I know, I know what I'm talking about, old man. Mm-hmm. Leave me alone. So, Audie, you've got this amazing businessman as an assistant coach. How yeah. does he bring the business techniques, business mentality into And, you know, Solon is a well healed community, too. So, there's yeah. going to be a lot of business owners coming out of that coming out of your program or right. attorneys or doctors or, you know, whatever. By the dozens. Yes. But, um, well, he, he brings a lot of his grit. And, uh, gotcha. you know, again, from it was uh, it's, it really started in college for him. He has uh, he was coming out of high school, fourth in the state, you know, very, very good. Right. But, you know, you wouldn't guess as a kid, one time state place winner out of high school. Yes becoming a two-time division one all-american that is that, that is just a product of knowing what you can do when prop uh properly coached sure and put your nose at the grindstone yeah. do some hard work and you just develop who you are as 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 a wrestler and so he's he's brought a lot of toughness to the to the kids and and you know he has great technique as well but you know he, he's trying to instill a lot of the toughness that it takes sure you know, yeah. does he bring any uh, any stories from the business world in and just say, hey, this happened to me that was t- really tough and I had to take a step back? You know, something that he could relate to to the wrestling man. Yeah, well, he, he does, but he kind of keeps those short. Okay. And he kind of keeps everything wrestling-oriented. Gotcha. And, uh, you know, geared toward being tough. Because gotcha. it's, you know, w- what we do is hard. And if you can't be tough with what we do, it's it's really difficult to be successful. Yeah. So you know, being able to build calluses in the right places, right. I guess you know, just be, you know, it's going to be hard. Mm-hmm. You have to you, at some point it has to be uncomfortable. Yes. And if it isn't, then you're not going to maybe not accomplish the goals you want to accomplish mm-hmm. and do the things you want to do. So um, there's no way around it. And, yeah. You know, so we kind of just go with that. Well, it's interesting, too, because two of my other guests, Jake Goodwin, mm-hmm. my assistant coach, said it's a very honest sport. Oh, yeah. And the other, another uh, guest of mine, George D. Camillo, uh, mm-hmm. he's a contemporary of yours, right? Yeah, team is together at University of Virginia. There you go. He said, I'm uncomfortable with, with being uncomfortable. I mean, I'm comfortable with getting uncomfortable. So he pushes himself to that position, you know, and obviously made us the national finals. And mm-hmm. uh, not, not a bad career, you know, for a yeah. little kid out of Lyndhurst, Ohio, right? Uh, so all those things are, you know, it's pretty interesting to have that occur. So, so Gus, I'm going to ask you, do you bring any business techniques that you've learned into the wrestling room to some of the guys that you coach? I think it's the opposite. I okay. think I just take wrestling into the business world. Okay. I mean, we're, I mean, we, we like to think we're nice guys, but when it comes down to it, we're cutthroat businessmen. When we mm-hmm. have to put somebody out of business, we'll put them out of business yeah. ethically. And I mean, if, it's us or them. Mm-hmm. It's going to be us. Yep. I mean, yep. I think we took that. We take that more. We take more from the wrestling world into the business world. And I think that. I mean, some of my vendors. Like I'm not allowed to talk to some people in the company. I got it. <laughs> I have like assigned people I'm, I'm allowed to talk to, and I got it. And and it's it's not them. 
not a nice guy or anything. Sure. It, it's just if you say you're gonna do something, you're gonna do it, right? Yep. And sometimes the business world doesn't quite work that way. Yep. So we remind them that we're wrestlers and that's the way we do it. Yep. You had mentioned Mike. Mike's a heck of a businessman himself. Oh, absolutely. Mike Thompson. Yeah. yeah. Yes, yeah. indeed. Yeah. Yeah. He's yeah. he's made some good choices along the way too. With you know he he had his own business and uh, you know he he made some good decisions and he's he's positioned himself to be sure to do real well and uh, you know he has for a couple of years so he's you know again he's one of those guys who learned how to work hard mm-hmm. and took that into his professional life right and as a result. You know he's doing very well. That that's that's so great to hear because it's important that that kids see that. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? That they come in there and it, you don't have to you know you don't have to talk a lot about it, right? But right. You, but once in a while you should say, hey, I had a tough day. You know I've had I've had those in business where a guy just didn't pay the bill or were just dicks basically, and I wanted to be honest with the kids. I walked I would walk into the room. I said I had a really shitty day. Here's why, but here's what I'm going to do. And this is about reality. So it's about what's going on here in the wrestling room. It's a microcosm of what's happening. You got to figure it out, you know, because you only can rely on yourself sometimes. And I like that mentality. I don't know if that's kind of your mentality. No, I but, like that. You know what I'm saying? I like to tell my kids when they're little, mm-hmm. I go, I do the K through eight. Yeah. I tell them you could work now, play the rest of your life, right. or play now and work the rest of your life. You choose. <laughs> Which one you want to be? It's a lot more fun playing when you're a grown up than when you're a little kid. Take. <laughs> it is, but I also feel too that your work is play. Yeah, I think that you really love what oh, you do, yeah. right? Well, I'm retired from my real job. This is sure. This is fun. What was your real job? 25 years, Cleveland Police Department. Yeah, thank you so much. That's pretty cool shit. Thanks, That's really good stuff. And how about you? You having fun with your dad? Yeah, I mean it's it is awesome. I, mean, I like to bust his balls a lot. I mean, of course. And then Charlie was. A co- actually, a coach of mine when I was in high school, but okay. now it's kind of cool that it went from coach to a, a friend relationship, so gotcha. it's just nonstop ball busting, and I can be a pain in the butt, but I really, <laughs> I mean, it's, it's a perfect situation. I, I wouldn't have it any other way. It lets me stay in wrestling. I get to hang out with my friends. Sure. It's, it is awesome. He's been to Hong Kong. He's been to Budapest. It, wow. You know, it's, we're going to Tokyo this summer, so it's cool. been That's fantastic. What a good deal. That's well, fantastic. We, we struck a big deal with the UWW United World Wrestling. Nice. We um we're the only product I've ever endorsed, wow. and right now, Gus, Charlie, and myself are writing the protocol for the Olympic ID pro Olympic ID protocol. That is wow. that is spectacular. I mean, it's kind of like from our basement to you yeah. know coaching your kid growing up to flying around the world in yep. front of the world medical committee and stuff, and now writing the protocol for the Olympics. Well, I'll tell you what, man, that is that is fantastic. I mean, I had a aha moment when I was in Vegas, and I walked into a CVS, and I saw my cough pops there. Yeah, yeah. You know, and I'm like, wow, you know, but to, but the Olympic protocol, there's, you know, That's wow, the tip that of is, the pyramid for us. That is, that, that, that is fantastic. That is fantastic. I remember when when it first started, and, and Guy said our products are all natural. I said, well, how how is that going to get anything off your skin? You need yeah. chemicals. Yeah. But until you try the product, right? And it is without. I've you know been around the sport a long time and mm-hmm. have tried a lot of different things. It is the best that you'll ever use, and yep. it and it's and it, it's. I, I don't want you know nothing's one hundred percent. Of but, course. Yeah. You know if you can get as close as you can, that's that's where you want to be. And the best thing is they they don't offer just one type of product. There's right. the wipes, there's shampoos, there's soaps, there's hard, there's bar soap, there's, there's, I mean, mat cleaners, there's just a long It's a godsend to wrestling. No it really is. And it. it's yeah. it's one of the things that, um, you know, if you'd have thought of 30 years ago, man, what could we do mm-hmm. that would help the community, number one, number two, you do well for yourself with it, and, and you know, and Guy came up with that. Yep. And, uh, and his partner. So it, it's, uh, you know, blossomed into into what it is and 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 it's it's, it's cool the best it is the best it is cool and i want to thank you for your sponsoring us starting pretty soon so thank you yeah. so much for that um guys i want to leave you um i would love to talk to you i mean i could talk to you all day um but we we wrap up the show with a nugget or two so i'm gonna turn it over to gus first if you want to leave the audience with a nugget or two about coaching and what coaching meant to you I just, it's more along the lines of, like I said, I had a list of people, and I, I don't know how I missed it, but obviously Greg Irvish needs to be added to oh, my sure. list, of my course. I don't, One of the best guys of all time. For some reason, but yeah. 
all the, the gifts that were given to me growing up, oh. and it, it just wouldn't be fair to, to hog them. Gotcha. So that's I, I'm doing it more, at least I can have my, my own conscience clean, that I'm not just sitting on everything that was given to me. I'm able to give it back to some of these kids that are so in the pay, same position I'm in. Pay it forward. Yeah, absolutely. I love that. I absolutely love that. Audie, out of Solon, Ohio, talk to me. Well, What's going on? What I would say is that... Um, <clears throat> <clears throat> always be if, if you're a coach mm-hmm. mentor the kids come alongside of them and be in their corner but also uh, you have to keep yourself open to learning as well so it's good to be mentored by others uh, whether it's a former coach a friend someone else is who's doing it with you but um, it's always good to learn as you do this profession because you know if, if we stop learning then uh, you know we become stagnant and ineffective in so life. you're the perpetual <clears throat> student i like that yeah we you know yeah, i like that as, as an educator we, we always talk about being lifelong learners sure. learners so sure. you know if i wasn't doing it then i wouldn't be doing our profession right so well i i believe the student becomes a teacher and the teacher then teaches the student back so it's a really beautiful thing where kids can teach you they did all the time right i, I, yeah. I learned stuff you know you, you can't have pride in thinking that you, you know everything right. so Learning stuff from from diff- from everywhere is is always good. That's cool. And guy, you my coach t- my coach tips always be honest. Never compromise your dignity. Okay. You know, protect your name. Right. And if you don't enjoy a journey, don't take the trip. Love it. Integrity. Integrity. Love that. I love that. Well, gentlemen, you've left us all with some phenomenal stuff. I really appreciate this so much. Audie Etienne's of the head coach at Solon. Continued success. Good luck. Thank you. We're gonna be we're gonna be doing this uh, probably about six or eight weeks. So yep. So they'll know that this we did this just before sectionals. Just, yeah. So good luck at Kenston. Thank you. Thanks. You uh, too. Guy and uh, Gus. Uh, good luck with your Vermilion, your growth, your Olympic protocol, all the fantastic things that you do for not only our sport but now for the general public. Thank you so much. Sure. Thank you. All right, Thanks, guys. Pete. Thank you, Pete. You got it. Thank you so much. This is Coach Cimarroni, and we are blood. Hey, Blood Time listeners. This is Maverick Peters over at MV Podcasting. Just want to give a quick shout out to our dear friends at Defense Soap. They're doing an incredible job staying on top of the world crisis that is COVID-19. Check them out if you get the chance at www.defensesoap.com. Thank you.